And I certainly want to see us pass legislation that keeps our children safe. Uh, I am sensitive to some of the concerns that uh, human rights organizations have consistently expressed about the legislation. They warned that the bill could result in the censorship of lawful speech and activity in a manner that will disproportionately burden diverse communities, particularly the LGBTQ community. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask consent to enter into the record a coalition letter uh, sent and signed by 133 human rights organizations, including the Human Rights Campaign, Amnesty International, the American Civil Liberties Union, GLAAD, and the Center for Democracy and Technology, which details these issues. Without objection. The concern has only become more pressing, uh, in my opinion, as Republican state legislatures across the country pass bills that broadly suppress LGBTQ rights and public discussion of LGBTQ issues, leaving the internet as one of the few remaining safe spaces available for discussion. I'm also concerned that as drafted, this bill may create new obstacles for vulnerable communities that rely on the security and privacy tools, particularly encryption, that this bill risks undermining. Just last week, this committee, you did a good job, Mr. Chairman, of laying out the context for how we got here today by uh, outlining and reminding us of the various hearings that we've had to date on related topics. Just last week, this committee heard testimony about the landscape of access to healthcare in a post-Dobbs world. So let me be specific about this. One issue highlighted at the hearing last week was the growth of tracking and surveillance to prevent women from accessing reproductive care and to identify service providers who assist women in obtaining that care. Experts routinely recommend that people seeking abortions use encrypted services for their privacy, for their safety. And some women's healthcare providers say they rely heavily on encrypted forms of communication in order to protect their privacy and for, the per for, for their safety. So I think we need to be careful about the implications that this bill could have on the ability of women to access secure communication technologies and essential health services. So I want to reiterate my appreciation for the work that the sponsors and their staff have done to protect children online. Trust me, as a father, my heart breaks at the trauma and re-traumatization that victims of sexual abuse experience when their images are uploaded and shared online. I want to say, though, I also agree with this balance that uh, Senator Lee and Senator Padilla pointed out. I have a real concern about, in this bill about um, issues of cybersecurity and how we might empower the government to do things to target disadvantaged groups uh, for more harassment and discrimination, uh, groups that we know are ultimately vulnerable. That balance is really key for me, and I want to thank the bill's sponsors and the chairman for being willing to work with people like Senator Lee, myself, Padilla, and others to try to get this bill refined and better balanced before we take it to the floor. Um, and I echo some of the concerns raised by Senator Lee that it is important uh, that we not unintentionally uh, in the construction of this legislation um, cause there to be significant damage to the basic architecture of cybersecurity, uh, which does rely upon encryption technology. I know that's not the intent of the drafters. Uh, I think progress is being made in the right direction. I do want to flag that as a concern worthy of continued attention and refinement uh, if the legislation is headed to the floor. Thank you.